How do you know if you're inflamed? And how do you know if inflammation is making your back pain worse? That's what we're talking about today on the Retrain Back Pain podcast. I'm your host and the creator of Retrain Back Pain, Deneen Vigiano. Thanks so much for listening in to the podcast. And today we're talking about inflammation. And if you've listened to the previous podcasts, you're aware that one of the issues with current back care management is that it is mostly mechanistic, meaning that if you go to your doctor or you go to a physical therapist, a physio, and you have back pain, they are likely to give you exercises and stretches and ice or heat to manage the mechanistic parts of your body that are related to whatever you have going on, whether it's a strained muscle or a spondylolisthesis or stenosis, right? So the approach is AB is broken. We are going to fix AB. The approach that I take with my clients in retrained back pain is different. It's holistic. It encompasses the whole person and it's multidisciplinary. So I'm not reserved or required or limited by just prescribing exercises for someone. And in fact, exercise is usually the last thing that I get to with my clients. It's not the most important part of the therapy for me. Um, Managing inflammation is right up there with one of the factors that may be keeping you in a cycle of hurt. So let's get into it. What we're going to talk about today is the different types of inflammation, the common causes of inflammation, and how do you know if you're inflamed. And obviously this is a fairly large topic, and so this will be part one of a two-part series. I'll come back again next week with the next part of the series, talking a little bit more about pain and how to manage inflammation. So back pain is actually the sixth most costly condition in the U.S. and about 8% of all Americans, which is about 65 million, I believe, have recently reported an episode of back pain. And it's really frustrating when you've got back pain and you're going to physical therapy and you're doing all the things that all the pros are telling you to do, but it's not going away. And one of the things that may be overlooked, there's probably a lot of things overlooked, but one of the things that may be overlooked is your immune activation and how taxed is your immune system. And I often, I like to make the analogy to a game of Jenga. Jenga is that stacking game with wooden blocks where you have to stack blocks and then you have to pull one block out and you lose when you pull a block out or you add a block and the game of Jenga falls to the floor. It's about load. And inflammatory load means when you have multiple things going on that your uh, inflammatory processes are trying to manage. So if you've got multiple things going on, it's a lot harder to attack the source of discomfort, right? So if you've got allergies and then you've got something going on in your back and then let's say you sprain your ankle or let's say you get COVID, All of these things are adding to what we call your inflammatory load. So in general terms, inflammation is not a bad thing. Inflammation actually helps your body fight off infections and heal wounded tissues and injuries. There's two types of inflammation. There's acute inflammation, and this happens when you experience a sudden damaging event, like when you cut your finger, then you maybe gets hot and warm and starts bleeding. In order to heal the cut, your body is sending inflammatory cells to the site of injury and those cells initiate the healing process. So in this scenario, 
inflammation is helpful and necessary. The other type of inflammation is chronic inflammation. And inflammation can become chronic when your body's own inflammatory processes are constantly switched on. And this may happen because you're experiencing constant or recurring stressors, but your inflammatory system can also become dysregulated. In either situation, whether it's an overload or dysregulation error, your body continues to send out inflammatory cells, whether you need it or not. And this can become problematic. So two examples of chronic inflammation, one would be rheumatoid arthritis, and the other is back pain. And in both cases, when your body continues to ring the alarm bells, the emergency bells, that we've got an emergency inflammatory situation, your body is actually producing more inflammatory cells than you need, or it's not directing them to where you need them. And in this case, it can actually prolong inflammation, and sometimes it may actually result in some additional joint or tissue damage. So good inflammation is comes in, does its job and gets out. And chronic or persistent inflammation sticks around and it generally becomes a nuisance for your body, right? So we want to we want to take some measures. And we're going to talk about that next week on how to manage how to reduce inflammation in your body. For today, let's talk about what some common causes of chronic inflammation may be. And one of them can be exposure to toxins or pollution or industrial chemicals. Um, untreated acute inflammation, like if you do cut yourself and then you just ignore it or you step on a nail and you don't get it treated, something like that, that can cause uh, more inflammation. Autoimmune disorders can occur where you, these inflammatory cells start attacking healthy tissue. They get dysregulated and confused and instead of attacking an infection or wounded tissue, they then start attacking healthy tissue. In more practical terms, there are lifestyle factors that we are all collectively participating in that may be exacerbating or prolonging the inflammatory condition in your body. So I'm going to name a couple of these and think about if you are exposed to any of these because these are actually, these are the ones that we can control more easily than the ones I just mentioned. So if the first one is drinking alcohol. There is no amount of alcohol that is not really poisonous to your body. It's, it's just bad. And I'm saying this, but I, I drink alcohol. It's, but it's a calculated risk when I drink alcohol. If I am in a healing crisis, if I'm in a lot of pain or I just got injured, I'm not gonna drink alcohol. So if you are in a bad way and you've been in a bad way and you've been consuming alcohol, that's one easy, easy thing that you can just remove from the equation and see if there's any changes. Um, sugar is also highly inflammatory. And so if you tend to have a sweet tooth or you're eating lots of processed foods, or even if you're eating a really high carb, high starch diet, because those do turn to sugar in your body. So sugar is highly inflammatory and it's one of the easiest things we can start to reduce in our daily life. Um, if you're experiencing chronic stress, that can also lead to inflammation. So if you're under stress and you are not pursuing any activities to mitigate that stress, like maybe there's stressful situations in your life that are a little out of your control. In these circumstances, it's really important to initiate some sort of a self-care wellness practice for your mental health and well-being. Could be breathing, could be gentle yoga, could be meditation, could be knitting, 
right? So something that helps you manage stress, which for many of us, that could be exercise. Exercise is very helpful in managing stress, unless you're exercising too much or too intensely. So believe it or not, exercise can also be a lifestyle factor that is contributing to inflammation in your body. And everyone is really individual, so it really depends. If you're not exercising enough and you've just been sort of a couch potato lately and you know better, and that's okay, but I'm letting you know that that state of lethargy creates stagnation in your body. And without pumping your muscles, you're not pumping your blood, you're not moving your lymph, and that same stagnation that leaves you immobilized binge watching Netflix is the same stagnation that is also going to let inflammation set in and then hang out for longer than you want it to be there. So you got to move to move inflammation, right? However, exercising too much, exercising too intensely, or exercising too frequently can also create inflammation or exacerbate inflammation. And so it's really, I, I say this all the time, and you may have heard me say this before if we've worked together, but retraining back pain is really about the art and craft of trial and error. There is no magic number where I can say you should be exercising for 25 minutes, five days a week at this level. It's really a let's see what happens. Let's see how the inflammation feels. Let's see how your back and your knees and your hips and your ankles feel, right? Let's see if you're sleeping well or if your sleep is disturbed. It's We have to look at everything all the time because it's all very important. So not exercising enough and exercising too much can also have an effect on inflammation. And then obviously, if you're carrying some extra weight, and who's not carrying some extra weight at the end of the pandemic? Um, if you're carrying some extra weight, that extra weight makes you more susceptible to inflammation. So let's work on getting you back down to an acceptable weight, right? How do you know if you're inflamed? Look, how would you know this? And one of the things that actually motivated me to approach this topic today is because I was speaking with someone recently and we started on this topic of inflammation and, and she wanted to save me some time. So she interrupted and she said, oh, no, 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 that, that I, I'm fine. I don't have inflammation. And I said, how do you know? And she said, because when I get a cut, it heals immediately. That's not really a good barometer of whether or not you have or get inflammation or whether you are currently inflamed. I understand her thinking, but that's it's, it's inaccurate and um, not representative way to assess whether you're inflamed. And so some of the ways you know if you're inflamed are that your skin turns red at the site of the injury. Um, you, it may feel really hot. You may have pain in the joints or tenderness either around the joints or at the skin level and swelling. So that's all for, you know, obvious inflammation. Chronic inflammation, if you've been dealing with your back for a while and you may have some chronic inflammation, it's a little harder to figure out but sometimes inflammation can manifest as abdominal pain, fatigue, foggy thinking, joint pain, or just generalized stiff and achiness, mouth sores, skin rash, weight gain, depression, bone loss, heart issues or chest pains, and something called intermittent explosive disorder which I had never heard of that terminology before I actually wrote the article on this topic for 
my website, but that's a thing. It's controlled outbursts of anger, intermittent explosive disorder. And so, you know, I, I just want to say that if you've got some unexplained things going on in your body, go to a doctor. If your doctor doesn't know what's going on, go to another doctor. If that doctor doesn't know what's going on, try seeing a different type of doctor. I would recommend seeing a functional medical doctor, a f- functional MD, because functional MDs look at more of the functional holistic uh, perspective. They're not really going after treating your symptoms. Functional medical doctors are really more invested in getting to the source of your issues. And so I'm speaking in real general terms. My lens of focus is back pain. And there are lots of diseases and viruses and medical events that are way outside my scope of practice that could also be causing chronic inflammation. So things like Lyme disease, um, Hashimoto's, thyroid disorders, um, cancer, you, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of medical issues that I don't specialize in that you should definitely see a doctor for if you suspect that that may be a thing. Uh, so that's just my disclaimer. I do have a doctor here in New York who I highly recommend. His name is Dr. Robert Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M. And his company is called Fresh Med. And he does do telehealth consulting. So if you're looking for a functional medical doctor, if you're thinking, oh, I always wanted to see a functional medical doctor, call Dr. Rob. He's really great. Okay. So you may be wondering at this point, how do I know? I just want to know if I have inflammation. The way you would know is through blood tests. So you would go to your medical provider and you would ask them, normally when you go for your annual physical, in the US at least, they do a full blood panel as part of your annual checkup. And in that annual checkup are lots of blood tests that can indicate what's going on with inflammation for different systems in your body. And so if, if you're like, I just, want to, I just want an answer, I just want to know if I'm inflamed, you can guess or you can go back to your doctor and say, I want a blood panel for inflammation. And if you check my website and look under the most recent article or the article um, that is titled, um, how do I know if I'm inflamed or how do you know if you're inflamed is the name of the article, I've listed the blood tests that they will generally check in a blood panel for inflammation. But your doctor knows and they're 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 pretty generalized, so I don't think you have to ask for specialized tests. I think a general blood panel, blood workup is going to give you the answers that you need. So, I hope this was informative for you. And you know, I want to just say on the topic of inflammation, Inflammation is called the silent killer. It is very serious if it sticks around for a long time. And so it's highly correlated to all the big diseases from depression to cancer, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, dementia, allergies, asthma, chronic fatigue, and all autoimmune diseases are all related to your body being able to handle the inflammatory process. And so if you're just walking around thinking I've been inflamed forever because of my back or because of multiple factors, I hope this chat has proven to be a source of inspiration and motivation for you to take some action either with your doctor or with changing some lifestyle factors. Um, And that is what we're talking about today. Next week, I'm going to come back to you and we'll talk about um, ways to manage inflammation, to reduce inflammation. So please tune in next week. And it would be really helpful for me and for other listeners, if you're enjoying the podcast, to take a second and either leave a couple of stars or leave a review on the Retrain Back Pain podcast on whatever your preferred platform is. That's all for now. 
Have a great day. Thanks again for listening. It means so much to me. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.